he is almost as maneuverable as a fighter. The Bofin is so completely armed defensively that any fighter would have the utmost difficulty in shooting her down. Important equipment is the rubber dinghy, apparently frail seagoing craft which has saved so many valuable lives in this war. The rubber boat is inflated from a small gas bottle containing compressed carbon dioxide. It will support the Beaufort's complete crew. The Beaufort is powered by two 1200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney twin wasp engines, every tiny section of which is built in this great shop by Australian workers. The building of this engine alone is a terrific task, which any Australian industrialist would have shied away from in pre-war days. But under the pressure of deadly conflict, they are coming from the production lines in quantity. The twin wasp has 14 cylinders, arranged in two rows around the crankshaft. The completed motor is on its way to the test house, where it will be rigorously tried for flaws. In a heavily insulated room, it is hooked up to controls and run continuously for 10 hours. It's every reaction watched and noted by highly skilled engineers. After its 10 hour run, the engine will be completely dismantled, minutely examined, and then reassembled for a final test which involves another four hours running. For the final 30 minutes of its test, it is run at full rated power. When the engines finally go to the bomber, they will tear through the air at nearly 300 miles per hour. They are as near to perfect as human hands and ingenuity can make them. Minister for Aircraft Production, Senator Cameron, is an interested spectator as the Beaufort is prepared for the test pilot. The highly intricate and immensely strong locally mactured retractable undercarriage must be finally checked. You would be staggered if you knew how rapidly completed Beauforts are leaving the production lines. The test pilot is giving her the gun, and is she performing? With flaps down, she's coming into land, slipping reluctantly from the sky. Back to a perfect three-pointer. The ship's okay in every respect. She's given a grand performance. In no time, she's on her way to the RAAF to join the rapidly growing bomber squadrons of the service. Those youngsters know what to do with fine aircraft, and they can use all the Beauforts they can get beneath their flying feet. They sweep into their natural element, finest aircraft of their type produced in the world today, flown by pilots whose skill and daring has won them fame in practically every theater of war in this world upheaval. Great birds of battle, viciously taloned, soaring warily in search of any who would seek to disturb the nest which through 150 years of history has never been disturbed by alien hands. Young men climb the stairways to the stars. Youth rides the glorious highways of the heavens with grim adventure huddled close at every elbow that freedom may live. Their wings Australian achievement Sturdy, efficient. May it be that the serene surety of their flight points the road destiny has planned for the Australian people when the smoke and flame and suffering of war is at an end. Fly on, Beaufort, and may victory fly with you. <laughs> 